Welcome back to Light Source Engraving, folks. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how to turn a $1 trivet into a $30 trivet. So the first thing I want to show you is my method of putting tempera paint onto a glass trivet, a glass, whatever it may be, so that you can engrave it with your fiber laser or diode laser. So the first thing you're going to need is some tempera paint or temporary paint. And you'll find it as washable paint, but this is from Hobby Lobby. This whole bottle costs about five dollars. And you can also pick up some at the Dollar Tree such as this Prang brand cost about a dollar for a bottle they only had purple so I picked up purple but I would normally get black and then what you'll want to do is get yourself a little paint sprayer like this and hook it up to your air compressor or or you could even get a little battery powered sprayer And it's a little airbrush that you can fill the reservoir with paint and then use this to coat your glass. So if you don't have an air compressor, you don't want to mess with it, you want something portable, something easier, you can go with one of these. I'll put a link in the description to the one I have. Or you can go with one of these. And I'll put a link in the description to one similar to what I have. But it's just a regular little paint sprayer. This is a little mini version. It has a little mini reservoir. So basically all you have to do is for this textured glass like we're using here, I'm going to engrave the bottom, engrave the reverse, and coat the... So I'm coating the bottom with paint. Basically turn on the air. I'm going to prop it up here so you can see it. So we want to spray it. Make sure it's level because it is wet. And that's it. A nice even coating and it's ready to go. Now, if you're in a hurry and you want this to dry quick, that's when your heat gun comes in handy. All you have to do is take a couple minutes, dry this out until it looks almost chalky. And that's it, you're ready to go. And we can put this underneath the diode laser, which we'll do right now. But before we get this under the diode laser, I went ahead and ran one trivet directly on the honeycomb because I wanted you to see what happened. So I'm going to roll in the footage of that right now. But you can see that there is flashback and the flashback from the honeycomb will mark the side of the glass that we don't want marked. So then it leaves some a little bit of pitting and some d distorted areas that just do not look good so you want to make sure you keep your glass piece elevated off of your honeycomb if you guys remember or if you haven't saw them these are the little hold downs developed by a rich la hobby guy and these are typically great for holding down plywood that could be warped on your laser bed well they're also good for holding the glass trivets let me show you that so here we have our hold down we have our glass trivet which is sprayed and dried all we have to do is just get a corner of that on there we just distribute them roughly even Once you have that, set it down, and just like that, it's ready to go. 
it's held up off the bed and you won't have any of the flashback problems. So what we're gonna to run today is the Bless This Home. And we're gonna run that on the round trivet. And I don't know if you guys have used Lightburn Circle Finder tool before. Uh, it is available, so it's a tool that you can use to find the center. Now, it's not too hard to use, it's just time consuming. You basically, okay, with the center finder tool, we go to laser tools, center finder. And what this center finder tool will have you do is jog your laser head. So you fire your laser head and you jog it. And let's say you jog it to a, you jog it to a position that's on the outside of your object. So let's say you jog it here. And then it'll have you jog to another position. So let's say you do it here. And then you jog to another position on the outside of your circle. And if you jog there, you set you set your points and then it will calculate and show you exactly where the center is. It will give you the option to draw a guide circle around the center point. Another thing we can do, let's switch cameras. And this is what I like to use. I just have a little uh, center finder tool and it'll help you find the diameter of whatever object you're working on. But we don't need the diameter. I just want to know the center point. So all I have to do is pop this up here, draw one line, move it around to another side, draw a second line, and where those lines cross, we have the center of our object, of our circle. So that's how I like to do it. Although the center finder tool is available, you can use that. And then what I'll do at this point, is turn on the laser and then I will have the laser fire and I will jog the laser let me change my jog distance so now we can fire the laser and then now that it's firing we can move this to the center let me change my jog distance down to three millimeters and right there we are in the exact spot we need to be for the center then I just head back to Lightburn, and what I will do is I'll click Show Last Position, and then you'll see that Lightburn shows us that position of the laser, which is let me delete those, which is right here. So we know that's the center. So if that's the center. We can then grab our artwork. I'll grab the circle too. And then we can move this until the center is right at that current position of the laser. Then we know we have our artwork exactly centered in that trivet. And at this point, we're ready to run it. So let me turn on my exhaust fan, close the lid to the lasermatic, and we'll get this project started.
All right, folks, we have our finished trivet fresh off the laser. And you can see that looks very nice. Let's see the back. Do we engrave the back? That looks very good. Now, let me show you Another result. How about Brilliance Laser Ink? Hey, that looks good too. That came out very nice. I screwed up the bottom. I didn't have it centered. I wasn't, or I didn't center my graphic over the laser position. I wasn't paying attention. But you can see it looks spectacular. I wish I wouldn't have screwed that up. I'm going to have to do another one. Now, with my settings, I'm going to show you two other pieces. Some people say they like to use masking tape. With my settings, you will not get an engrave using masking tape. It's really good at making a mess. So there's blue masking tape. Here's white masking tape. It just barely gets the paper off and leaves the glue behind. So I imagine this is running too fast and not enough power to burn through that masking tape. It's probably going too fast. So the moment that you've been waiting for I think these settings are ready for prime time and I am ready to share them with you right now. Okay, for a 30 watt diode, I'm using the Roly Lasermatic Mark II 30 watt. I'm running a speed of 7,000 millimeters per minute, power of 90%. I leave my air assist on. I'm running bi directional fill with a line interval of 0.082 and one pass no cross hatch scan angle of zero so that is it for the settings for the 30 watt diode using the tempera paint or brilliance laser ink with those two it is confirmed that it works it does not work with the blue masking tape or the beige masking tape and that concludes my video on making Either no trivet with the masking tape, nothing happened. Or again, the nice one with the Brilliance Laser Ink. I'm going to leave a just coupon in the description for Brilliance Laser Ink so you can check that out if you want to use the Brilliance and get that dark, that nice dark color. Or you can use the tempera paint. I'll leave links in the description for the paint and the sprayer that I, the two different sprayers that I mentioned. I'll leave those links in the description. But that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you uh, make some cool glass trivets or anything glass with your Lasermatic. Please be sure and post up a picture in the Laser Makers Realm Facebook group. There's a link in the description to take you there. I love to see what people are making with uh, ideas or settings or any help that I've given them. It's just rewarding to see because that's what I'm here for. Well, let's see everybody succeed. But special thanks to my patrons for helping support all these testing materials and supplies. I greatly appreciate that. If you haven't checked out my Facebook page, look me up on Facebook. Check out uh, Light Source Engraving on Facebook. Be sure and like and subscribe as usual. I greatly appreciate that. I appreciate every view. And most importantly, have a great day, folks. And we'll see you in the next one.